Good morning. We've got a 2001 Ford Ranger 3.0 liter V6. And there's a few complaints on here. We have a coolant leak, which we've already tracked down right down there, right around the thermostat housing. They were thinking radiator, but uh, it's looking like that's the only one we have so far. Also, a couple broken door handles. They need to subwire it up. And let's see, what else do we have? It is, yeah, coolant leak, coolant flush, wire the sub, door handles, something wrong with the oil cap, and the battery terminals. Um, this style apparently did not did not last somebody cranking down on it, so going to get into all that a little later, but one thing I noticed when they brought it in was when I felt the radiator hoses while it was running, it seemed like they had a lot more pressure in them than I'm used to seeing um, on, on most vehicles, unless there is a head gasket leak or it's overheating. Uh, no other real signs of overheating, so... What we're going to want to do is check for a head gasket leak. Now there's combustion leak detectors. Um, one thing I like to do when you have the radiator cap directly on the radiator like this, because a lot of times those combustion leak detectors, they'll end up sucking up some of that fluid. One thing we can do is get one of these spill-free funnels. And let's see what we got. Yep. And we can actually proceed as if we're just bleeding the cooling system. If you haven't used one of these, um, this is absolutely the way to bleed a cooling system if it's got the cap directly on the radiator like this. So we're going to hook all this up and add some water, just some water for right now, because whether we have a head gasket leak or whether we're just going to end up doing a cooling system flush. We're emptying the coolant anyway, so we're not worried about this staying above, um, staying at the at the proper freezing point for for coolant. We'll get a chunk in there, and what we're going to be looking for is we'll see some bubbles initially, most likely, because usually there is a little bit of air in the cooling system when you first get into this. But what we're going to be looking for is eventually, if there is a significant combustion leak, we're going to have bubbles continue to come up through that neck there, and the level of the fluid is not going to go down. Now, if there's just air trapped in the system and we're getting rid of that, then this fluid level is going to go down after air pockets come out, because that air is freeing up more space for the coolant to go into. If that doesn't happen, if the fluid level is staying the same, and after a few minutes of it bleeding, I'm actually going to mark it, um, mark it with the sharpie there, just to just to check where we're at. If the level is staying the same and we're continuously having air coming up, then that's a sign of a combustion leak. So let's start it up and see what we've got. We've got a dead battery. All right. All right, got our jump box hooked up. Give it a minute there. Always fun. Good. We'll need to add some water just to keep it up here. There's definitely air in that system that is not from a combustion leak, so let's get rid of that first.
let's go ahead and get in here and turn on the heat and that'll help us determine when we have let's see so we want the fan on heat all the way up blower in your face and that'll help us determine when we have the air purged out of the system because then we'll start getting we'll start getting warm air where most of it's gone when you don't have warm air and the vehicle is warm and that's usually because that there is either there's something wrong with the heater core it's been bypassed or something like that which is not the case here or there has been um, or there's still air trapped in the system that's stopping the coolant from flowing through the heater core now right here don't know how well you can see that but we definitely still have air coming up foaming a little bit at the top. That's not a great sign. Let's get our Sharpie. We're going to find the level of the coolant. And just get a little line right there. If it drops below that, sorry, I didn't know if you could see that. If it drops below that line, then we will know that there is still air being purged out of the system and it's still taking coolant. Camera quality is probably not quite good enough to let you see through that neck very well. But we see we've our level has gone down, so that's good. We're still purging air out of the system. It runs well. If it does have a head gasket leak, it's probably not a severe one because it is running very smoothly. Let's get rid of this. And we'll come back in a minute here. All right, it's been around about 15 minutes or so. You see I've moved, I've moved the coolant mark a couple times as the level has gone down. And we still got a little bit of bubbles coming up and the, the level's been about that same place for a minute now and we're still having a little bit of foam. And it's been at that mark for about 10 minutes or so. So I think we do have a small, very small combustion leak. And the other thing that's going on, I think we have a stuck open thermostat too. Let's see here. 98 degrees on the radiator hose, on the upper. Yeah. Ninety on the lower. 
I think we have an open thermostat too because this thing is not getting up to temperature. Usually they will run a little cooler with it open like this, but I mean, this is barely warmer than skin temperature. It's not, that's not so great. Luckily, that's where the coolant leak is anyway, is at the thermostat housing, so we'll be replacing the thermostat regardless. But that is one more thing. And having an open thermostat, I really don't think that we were getting <laughs> overpressure from overheating, which would also be another possibility. If it was overheating, then I'd say that could be a cause of, of having that excessive pressure that I noticed when it first rolled in. But I don't think that's what we've got. Slight head gasket leak. Now, I have seen vehicles with a, a fairly mild head gasket leak like this uh, go for quite a while. And this Ford 3.0 really is not a bad motor overall. It would be a fairly inexpensive head gasket job just because it's, it's overhead valve. You don't have to touch the timing set or anything like that. No evidence of overheating, so not, you know, not worried about serious damage to other components or the heads being warped or anything like that. We'll check them, of course, if we do dig into it. But it would be a fairly inexpensive head gasket job, but that being said, I've seen a lot of vehicles run for a long time with a, just a slight head gasket leak like this. This is this kid's first car, so we'll see what um, we'll see what he and his parents want to do about it. But when you have a serious leak, what will happen most often is you'll get no bubbles for a couple minutes, and then all of a sudden you'll get huge bubbles. It'll suck down a ton of coolant, and then it will, in a lot of cases, it'll boil back up and overflow. You won't be able to keep track of the coolant level at all just because it'll keep overflowing um, and then sucking it all back in and you'll think you need to add more and then it burps it all back up. Happens a lot on Chryslers, but... Yeah, as far as, as, far as head gasket leaks, this one's pretty manageable, so... We'll put together an estimate. We'll look at the, uh, we'll get a price on some door handles. Looks like really the cable in all likelihood. We'll see what parts are involved there. We'll dig into that. Battery terminals, that won't be bad. Oil cap won't be bad. But yeah. I'll have to check that out. Don't know about that. Yeah, we'll get a prognosis and a quote and see what they want to do. Anyway, I hope this was somewhat informative. And hopefully we'll see you later.